For forensics experts documenting the forensics analysis performed on the evidence, managing the cases and filling the final report can be a time-consuming and a frustrating task. Although most of the time to speed up the writing of the final reports, the copy and paste from all document is the most frequent action, but it doesn't cut it anymore. And that's why we built the forensics report to make it easy for forensics investigators and labs to track all their cases, evidence, and easily produce the final report. Getting started with the forensics report is simple. Just click on the new case button at the bottom of the window at the interface and uh, uh, you can create uh, a new case. By creating a new case uh, you are required to fill uh, some uh, key information such as the case name, the examiner that is going to perform the analysis uh, and uh, of course uh, something that needs to be mentioned the, the program is completely customizable by the end user. So also by examiners, we can create as much as examiners we need, but as also for the case type in which here you can see some, uh, some option, those options uh, have been added by, by Secure Cube to um, get you up and running quickly. But of course, if these are not the case type that you usually work with, you just uh, um, need it to modify this information and keep on working. You can apply the jurisdiction, the client, the starting of the investigation, and most of all, the template. Also, the template should follow the type of the case that we are going to work with. So by defining the template that we are going to work with, um, we are going also to see a specific template and a specific way the information will be presented. We can also define a custom task list, uh, always uh, following the type of the case in which we are going to work, we need to perform a specific task, a specific action, action to each evidence. So by defining a custom task list while working in this specific case, uh, we can always have at disposal all the tasks, all the activities that we should perform to um, the evidence of this case. Location, assignment date and date. And here on documents, we can apply um, an import PDF or images as well about the assignment documentation that usually the client provides us to start the uh, analysis, the forensics analysis of the evidence. I'm going to close this uh, um, information, this window, and I'm going to open a case with uh, some uh, additional information. So we can see all the information that uh, we have applied for this case. So this is the case name, this is the examiner, this is a criminal proceeding, and the jurisdiction is federal. The client is the prosecutor officer, and we start this investigation on 25 of uh, June. 2011. We have selected this uh, template, uh, which we can uh, see and eventually modify in this area. As you can see here, you can uh, define the paragraph that you want to include in your final report, the information that you want to display in the final report, and most of all, the you can modify, as you see, is pretty much similar to a Word document, the, the editor in this page, and you can define all the text and the content that should be um, presented and should appear in your final report. So this text is something that we provide together with the program, but is usually what we should do once we analyze uh, uh, digital evidence, which are the type of evidence that we work with in our lab. By defining and then eventually modifying the template, we can proceed uh, defining the task list that we saw before, the location and the assignment data. As you he see here, we have the assignment documentation uh, from, uh, from the client. We move on. So please bear in mind that this information are going to be presented in our final report. And as you see, we are just adding few information while in the final report, as, you, as we are going to see later, uh, we are going to see everything well presented. Moving on, we have the request details. So, as you know very well, most of the time the client will um, provide us for some specific requests, some specific analysis. So, 
uh, we want to include that also in the final report. So we are going to write here, uh, as uh, we saw for the template, it's pretty much similar to the word uh, editor. And uh, here we can uh, add uh, all the requests that the client is asking us uh, in order to conclude and uh, um, proceed with the forensics analysis of the evidence. On person, in fact, we are going to see the uh, hierarchy of uh, um, the, the client and the uh, appointment for the analysis. So we are going to see the prosecutor that is appointing um, Dr. Camello for the technical forensics analysis of the evidence, which is using his auxiliary for to complete the analysis. While in this area, we have the chain of custody. Chain of custody, we see all the people that get in contact with the evidence and the movement of the evidence. So, so also this information is going to be presented in the final report in order to um, make everyone aware of the movements of the evidences. Proceeding, we have the storage devices. As we work with digital evidence, we perform acquisition and those acquisitions are provided to the client and the person that needs to follow the analysis, usually in hard disk or DVD. So we provide storage devices. These are the type of devices that we usually provide. And also in this case, this information is something that we have at I've had uh, in order to speed up uh, our process of defining uh, all the information about the case. So we usually provide hard disk, pen drive, uh, DVD, CD, and NIS. For each uh, uh, type of storage of evidence of device, uh, we can define how many devices, how many copies, and for each copy providing additional notes, like uh, one is a working copy, one is the safe copy, and then also the uh, password to login. The last one are simply the notes. And as you can see here, in this field, we can write anything we want. And only in this area, we will not report what we write here inside the final report. So here, usually, we can use it to write down the number of the policemen, of the client, and so on. So once we create our case, we add all our information about it, then we are ready to add our evidence. As you can see here in my, uh, in my case, I've already some investigated person, uh, actually two investigated person, and both of them have two evidence related. For this person, this investigated person that we know the name and the surname, we have uh, one computer and as you can see here uh, we have the information about the computer we have the some acquisition note we have uh, uh, imported the acquisition log and the photo of um, of the evidence switching here we have also the credential to access uh, to the to the pc but uh, let's see how easy is to um, add a new device uh, a new evidence uh, to our case so we can start by selecting the type of, um, of evidence. Also, in this case, uh, this list is completely customizable by the end user. I mean, if you do not work uh, in your lab with this type of devices, uh, with this type of evidence, you just uh, rewrite all the type of, uh, of evidence and uh, all the notes, uh, all the information that you need to provide for each evidence, and then you can keep on working. So we have actually selected uh, a smartphone. This is uh, the name that we are going to apply to the uh, smartphone. And if we know, we can apply the owner. Moving on, we are going to add uh, some properties. As you see here, we have a drop-down menu in which we can select uh, some of the manufacturer. Also, these suggestions are some suggestions that we have had to our program because most of the time in our lab, we uh, receive Samsung, Apple, Huawei, Xiaomi, and LG as manufacturer of a smartphone. If you receive uh, other different uh, type of manufacturer, you just can modify this list uh, and uh, apply here. Of course, this area can be also, um, we, we can write it manually or select from the, uh, from the list. 
So the manufacturer is Apple, the model is uh, the 11. We do not know the IMEI. We may have applied some notes, like uh, it was found in the bathroom. And we can also add some login credential and eventually some notes. We save and as you see here on our list, we have a new investigated person and a new evidence. Um, a big difference here is that the, this evidence that we have just uh, um, created uh, is with a gray icon. And as you see, if we hover with the mouse, we see a tooltip saying to do. While if we hover in the ma with the mouse uh, on the other evidence, uh, we can see that this evidence is acquired this evidence has already been analyzed. Mm, this evidence uh, uh, wasn't acquirable, so we couldn't access to it, and this is acquired. So the only evidence that we need to keep on working in is the one that we have just uh, um, created. Here we can add uh, some acquisition notes, like uh, um, we had to change the um, display in order to conclude the um, analysis because without the display we couldn't uh, actually access to any information and uh, perform the analysis that's perfect in this area we can uh, add the extraction so there are so many ways to uh, add an extraction. The simple one is just uh, drag and drop the acquisition log inside the dedicated area. As you will see, uh, the extraction will be automatically recognized and the ashes will be calculated automatically. We save and we see that the digital signature are already applied. So we also are going to add the photo of the evidence and from here we can verify on the checklist if all the activities that we need to perform for each evidence is completed so uh, we have applied the uh, labels we have um, added the photo uh, we have added also the uh, report and uh, we have created the final storage support so everything that we need to do for each evidence, in this case it has already been done, so also for the last one that we were missing, so we are going to switch from to do to acquired. And now that we have all our evidences analyzed, we can just with a simple click generate report, select the folder in which we want to save the final report and in few seconds we are going to have our final report available and this is the final report so um, the, the, the export is um, compatible with a, a word format in order to keep on maybe modifying and adding additional information if needed. So this is the first page and as you can see on the first page we have the, um, the logo of the examiner, the email of the examiner, the website, uh, information about the case, uh, the client uh, and once uh, we started the investigation. What we are going to provide uh, with uh, the extracted data, so two are disk and one DVD, as we saw before. Then we have the table of contents, the list of figures, the abstract. So as we saw before, um, on the abstract and on the um, template, we saw that uh, uh, on the abstract area, on the abstract paragraph, we are going to uh, provide information about the uh, case, the client, uh, when we start the investigation, uh, the um, hierarchy of the analysis of the evidence, uh, and uh, the request uh, details from the client. So, as you remember, we saw um, that we simply added very few information on the program, and what we have added is uh, 
presented in a well-formed uh, final report uh, in a Word format that we just, uh, if everything is fine, we just need to save it as PDF and then uh, uh, send it to the to the client. So very few information and we have like uh, 45 pages by adding just uh, very few, few data inside the program. Here we have the summary of the performing activities. So this is a, a general text that we um, provided just to explain the type of activities that we usually perform as uh, digital forensics experts. Moving on, we have uh, all the information inside the storage devices, uh, the uh, assignment documentation, and the chain of custody. So uh, how the evidence has been moving, the introduction. So here again, we have the information on what we usually do in our forensics lab, what we are going to provide. And uh, moving on, the storage devices, uh, the content. Uh, and then finally, we have this description of the forensics tool used. So as you have seen, we have just uh, um, imported the acquisition log for each evidence. And according to the evidence and the um, automatic recognition by the program, we know that for the PC uh, extraction, we have used FTK Imager thanks to the acquisition log that we have imported. So uh, in the final report, we are going to provide some additional information about FTK Imager. So what it does and uh, a link to the website and some screenshot. Then we proceeding, we know that we have been, uh, we have used uh, Celebrate Youthin and a description of uh, what is Celebrate Youthin. We have used Tableau, Imager, and some information. And by moving on, then we have uh, the information on how to open the uh, reports that are uh, provided inside the storage uh, uh, devices. So for the um, extraction performer with the access data uh, FTK imager, we can open that uh, we can open that report by using this uh, um, this tool. Moving on for Celebrate uh, uh, extraction, we can use Celebrate Reader to open the report, and then we start with the acquisition. So we actually see. Uh, if you remember on the program, we have the three investigated person, the Nicola, Massimo and Alice. The Alice one is the last uh, that we add uh, together. So for here, we have uh, a summary of the investigated person and then we go on specific. This is the PC that we saw about, uh, about Gemello. And uh, we have all the information, the information about the acquisition log by using uh, the imager and then we proceed with uh, the um, other evidence uh, which we can see the manufacturer the model the IMEI the credential um, how it was acquired so this is a note that uh, we have applied a photo of the evidence and the acquisition log so by moving on we can see all the information that we have had and then the analysis area. So in the analysis area, we can also uh, keep on adding some additional information about what we have found out uh, about the request of the client. So everything that uh, was related to a drug content. So this is, uh, these are the results of the images and then we have the conclusion and the final row notes. So as you see, here we have a final report well formed with the 44 pages and we actually have added just few information on um, on the program so everything that by using the template by using all the information that we applied in the uh, program we can obtain a well formed document that follows the international best practices for the creation of uh, the final report so now that you have seen how easy it is, is uh, to uh, create a final report with the forensics report um, we are going to see in the next videos how to uh, use it in the specific D program.